Option number one is get through. I want to see that angle of approach. I'm asking the defenseman to go hot every time. It's always better to go 100% to get the live rep. Welcome to Brown University. Thank you for purchasing this video from Championship Productions. My name is Lars Tiffany, the head lacrosse coach at Brown University, and I'm going to review our team defensive schemes and slide scheme development with you on this film. Team defense and communication. It is absolutely vital that the defense, the six defensemen and the goalie communicate to each other while playing team defense in order to be successful to stop the opponent. The goalie, his terminology is all about on ball. At Brown University, our goalie does not decide who slides or where the second slide is. We want the goalie watching the ball. We want him watching the Dodger and talking to the on ball defender. Step left, step right, step out, step in. He may decide when we need to slide, but that's only as a backup resort if he thinks we haven't slid yet and we should have slid. But it's up to the rest of the defense, the five off ball defensemen, to make the decisions of who's sliding, who's the second slide, etc. So the goalie talk is all about on ball. What's the rest of the defense saying? First of all, we need the defense to say who's the first slide. Our terminology is we use the term hot, the hot man. Now the hot man, who identifies himself as saying I'm hot, can also, also ask some questions to help build the trust of the defense. He can say I'm hot, who's my fill, who's my second slide? The, the terminology for our second slide can be just that, who's my two, who's my second slide? You'll hear our defenders also use the word fill when we're out on the field, that's our term for fill into the crease, take care of the crease, take care of the insides first and foremost. Back to the hot man. That hot man, I'm hot, who's my fill, who's my two? Identifying that man if possible. I'm hot, Joe, you're my two. Joe, get in here. Next man, let's talk about Joe in this example. He's the two man. He's saying, I'm two, I've got you, hot man. Now if he can, again, use to take to the next level, use those names. You know, and if Dan is the hot man, hey Dan, you're hot, I'm your two, you can go, I've got you. Those extra words really help build the trust and ensure that we're not going to leave somebody wide open. We do have a terminology for the third slide, and uh, we call that the three or crash, meaning crash into the crease, fly into the crease. Uh, there's not always a third slide, and getting to the third slide isn't easy, uh, and sometimes it just doesn't line up for one but that would be the terminology for that third slide. Okay, hot man has identified himself. He's hot. He's got his fill. When he slides, what does he say? At Brown University, we have the term go. We're just using the stop lights, go. He, he sends himself. If, for some reason, he's made a decision that wasn't correct, or he doesn't need to slide anymore, maybe he took two steps and starts to go, he yells stop. Stop terminology means I've stopped the slide scheme. Everybody, the hot man, the second slide, the third slide, go back to your man. The final term, and you're going to see us do this a lot on the field, is used in our recovery. Once we've slid, the man who's been slid for, the original man on ball, when he's flying into the hole, we need to talk to him. We need to tell him where to go. In our schemes, he's told to not watch the ball anymore. When you're running in, look to the crease first, find the open man. While he's looking for the open man, the defense can tell him where to go. We use the term bump. If, we, if he hears the, vo the voice bump, he goes to that voice. What essentially is saying is the defender who says the, the word bump is telling the man who's beat, come to me, bump me back to my own man so I can, we can match back up as quickly as possible. So those are the terms that you'll hear us use continually on the field 6v6 defense. The terms we use with our defense when defining how we're going to slide against an opponent. We can slide from different areas with our hot man and then we can mix up where our fill slides come from, where our second slides come from. Terminology, coming from the crease. 
simple enough, we're going to slide that, the hot man from the crease. We can then have a terminology for the second slide. The fill could be crease, crease. We, if we use the term twice in a row, we're going to come hot from the crease, second slide from the backside crease. Adjacent. We may come hot from the adjacent defender initially. The second slide could be adjacent as well, therefore meaning our terminology. Let's go adjacent, adjacent. First slide, the hot man adjacent. Second slide, the fill man adjacent. And then we can start getting the combination packages. And this is, depending upon how much time you have with your defense and how much you want to work with them on this, now you can become a multiple scheme defense. You may practice and experiment with first slide hot coming from an adjacent defender, second slide coming from the crease. You can then combo the, vice versa. Maybe the first slide comes from a crease defender, the second slide comes from the near man adjacent defender. Sliding cross crease, terminology used when we're defending the ball on a dodge coming from behind the goal. Cross crease slide would be a defender sliding across the crease from the backside pipe to the ball. So I'm going to give you those terms. Those are terms we use with our men defining the slide schemes that we use here at Brown. We employ a variety of drills that start at the base level of one versus one and build that up to 6v6. We want to start with the, the fundamentals and evaluate the decision making of the men initially. This first drill is going to work on such. This is a 1v1 drill. We've got a midi with the ball up top, defender on him. We're going to put the hot man, our, our one slider, in the crease. And the C stands for coach. I like to put myself right in there. This first drill, this is pure one versus one. This slide man is only going to be a decision maker here. He's not going to make the slide. I'm just going to sit here and evaluate his decision making. So we're going to have a multiple of men up here ready to go 1v1. And I'm going to keep this hot man in here for about three or four reps. The dodger dodges. It's 1v1. And I'm just going to have this defender in a good stance, open, ready to go. I'm just going to say, hey, what's your decision making? If you think we should go, you yell go. If you don't think we should go, don't say anything. So what you'll see during this drill is this midi dodging hard, going to the goal, taking shots. And I'm standing right here. The reason I like to stand right here is I now have the vision that the hot man has. And so I can therefore give him good feedback right away. Team defensive slide scheme development begins with on-ball play. On-ball play, is, we're going to focus on a couple principles. First of all, we want to be good one-on-one -on -one defenders. The purpose of this video is not to really dive into that, but I'm going to do a couple, uh, I'm going to go over through a couple points to define what we're looking for to building into the team scheme development. On ball play with, a with an offensive player dodging from up top. Number three, Todd Fiella, fundamental rule, do not give up the middle of the field. We're going to ask him to play tough defense. And we're going to ask him not to get beat. But first and foremost, we don't want to give up the middle of the field. So we're going to ask Todd's positioning is going to not be lining straight up on him. Straight up to positioning would be this. We're going to say, Todd, actually take a little bit away that middle. Maybe take a step to your right, and the goalie can communicate this through. In our team defensive schemes, our goalie worries about on-ball. He talks to the on-ball defender. That's his role. Our goalie does not talk about who's hot, who's the first slide. Our goalie focuses solely on ball and the defender on ball. So by his positioning, Todd will take away the middle of the field. He can still be in that bent knee stance. He's got his stick pointed out at the offensive player, but he's ready to play good solid defense and not give up the middle of the field. Let's say we got a dodge coming down from the side here. Mike Miller, step out. A dodge from the wing. Again, the same principle. Mike doesn't want to be straight in a straight line. Come on in, Nate. Come on in, Nate. During this dodge, Mike Miller is going to take away 
the top side. If anything, Nate would beat him to the middle. Sure, we're going to ask a lot of Mike and be a tough defender and not have to slide for him, but make sure above all, above all else, do not give up the top side. Okay. Another fundamental rule for us, Nate, come on back here. Let's say Nate's dodging from X. Mike Miller's guarding him at X. Again, taking away top side, Nate dodges one direction or the other. If Nate chooses his left, Mike Miller's roll, again, stop right there. You can see Mike has taken away the top. We don't want Nate to go around us. Go ahead and go around him, Nate. Let him go around you. That's not where we want the offensive player to go if he does get around us. Go on back. No, no, come, we'll have you come right here. Nate, come on right back here to the hold. Once we get in this hold position, if anything, if Nate were to slip past us, it would be underneath where he has less of an angle to shoot right away. So I just want to go through those fundamentals first with you about on pole positioning that's critical for our team defensive slides. If we know where the offensive player is dodging, then we know where to slide. This drill then builds to asking the hot man to now actually make the slide. I've added an outlet here. I don't want to create drills where there's a lot of one versus two. It's not realistic. We ask our offensive players to move the ball once they've drawn a slide and they've got two defenders on them. So we provide him an outlet. It's a very simple drill. Again, dodging, 1v1. I'm going to put myself in here again because I still want to see his decision making and I want to see three things. I want to see his angle of approach, his body position as he arrives, and his stick position as he arrives onto the dodger. So as a dodger, let's say we force him to his right side. If the decision's been made that we should go, I want to see that angle of approach. I want to see him break down his body positioning, and I want to see the defender's stick positioning, ideally, in front of himself, and then as he approaches the Dodger, on the hands of the Dodger. The decision making is what we're going to evaluate in this 1v1 drill. It may be one versus two. So what I'm going to ask is number 44 here. He's going to be our hot man. That's our terminology of who's the first slide. I'm going to have him stand in the crease. For the purpose of this, the hot slide is going to come from the crease. And during a dodge from up top by number 46 versus number 33, my, versus number three, Todd, I'm going to listen to Peter's decision making. He's not going to go anywhere. So we're going to start off just listening to his decision making. I like to put myself as a coach right here. So I know I can feel Peter guarding me as if I'm the, the crease player. And Peter's just going to stand here during the 1v1 drills. And on the whistle, Jeff Foote will dodge. We can go ahead and jog through it. Todd Fellow is going to play defense. And if Peter thought he should slide, he would say go. That's our terminology for when we want to slide. He yells go. But for the purpose right now of this drill, he doesn't go anywhere. Allowing Jeff Foote to continue and go ahead and take the shot. Okay? Then the next one would funnel in. Okay? Go ahead, Todd. You can be the defender on the next one. Go ahead back up top. And we get the next 1v1. Go ahead. Same thing. If Peter never says go, I say, okay, you decided that you didn't need to slide there. I agree with you. Or I tell Peter, you know what, Peter? Right there, what I saw was I saw him beat by a good yard, and I saw that number 46 was able to get his hands free, ready, number 45 would get his hands free to shoot. I think you should have slid there. So what's helpful for me to be right here is because I can see what they see, and so we can go through the decision making. So it's a great way to develop the team schemes while doing a bunch of 1v1 drills, which may be good to do earlier on in practice. So let's do a few reps of these. You, uh, this, we're going to do this 100% live. What I'm, I'm going to watch for you go to 100%, but I'm really evaluating him. So I'm going to listen to his talk. I'm hot. What else does he say? Go. And I want to hear that go call. Okay? Go ahead. I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot. Go, go, go. Good. Right there, Peter, right at the very end, said go. Not a bad decision. Here we go, next one. I'm hot, 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 
I'm hot. I'm hot. Go, go, go. Good. Stop right there. Stop right there. Good decision making right there. I would tell Peter I liked the decision to not slide on that first dodge as the offensive player rolled and almost beat us or maybe just started to beat us top side to the middle of the field. Peter said go. Again, we would ask our defender there at 33 not to allow his man to beat him to the middle. Okay, another rep. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Go, 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 go. Good. Good decision there by Peter said go, especially if we break a stick during a dodge. And uh, good decision making on when to go on a slide there. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Uh, go, go, go. Good. We'll stop that run there. Again, I, for the purpose of the drill, these guys will be going a little more full speed on a normal day with me here, probably without a helmet. They're taking a little bit off. But what I really like about this drill, that decision making, listening to what they're going to say, and evaluating and critiquing their decision making, because in a team, sleep, in a team slide scheme, the decision making is critical. Team slide scheme development, working with a hot man, now what we're going to do, the drill, he slides, we're going to evaluate his positioning, his ability to break down, and the position of his stick as he arrives. So I'm going to put number 44 in the crease, again guarding me. We've got the dodger up top center, number 46, dodging number 33. Peter 44 here is going to make the, is, we're going to evaluate his decision making if he should go or not, and we're going to evaluate how he approaches it, how he breaks down, and where his stick is. For the purpose of this, of this drill, since he is going to slide and we are going to create one versus two, offensively, we ask that player to move the ball. We don't want to have a one versus two drill. Now, you may want to do that in your practice to recreate end of the game, trying to get out of a double team. But for us, we're just going to have him move the ball if he draws that slide. OK? Here we go. A couple reps. I'm going to hear him talking. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Good. Stop right there. Good on-ball defense. Michael, go ahead and do it another one. Good decision making there. Didn't have to slide. Here we go. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Go, 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 go. Good. Stop right there. Good. Nice job by there by Peter. Good time making that decision to slide. A good job breaking down. He got his stick out in front. A lot of times we're asking that hot man, Peter, to have his stick on his man, me, body closer to the dodger, so he's in a good, and he's in an open stance, where you can almost draw that line between me, his man, his feet, and the ball. We call that that open stance. Stick here, body up there. If he were to do the vice versa, if he had his stick up field, let's say he was left-handed or stood cross, cross body like this, my concern as a defensive coach is if I'm a good offensive player, I might be able to catch a pass here, and he's got to swing his stick all the way from that side of his body here, all the way over here to make this check. So instead, I like it with Peter stick here in this drill. Okay, let's continue. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Go, 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 go. Good. Again, he took a good angle, approached, broke down, got a stick in front of number 46, Jeff Foot. Jeff Foot moved the ball. Let's do one more. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Go, 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 go. Good. Okay. Again, another approach angle, another good approach angle by number 44 there. General drill. The general drill is a big name for 1v1 where we're going from off ball both offensively and defensively to on ball. We put the balls with the coach and in this example we're going to have him low left. Defender near the top of the crease standing in open position so he can his feet may be in this sort of positioning he can see the ball and he can see an opponent who he's responsible for. They, this may be his man, uh, depending on the slide scheme. Uh, this may be someone else's man, but he's going to fly out to guard this ball uh, once the pass is thrown. This offensive player 
We tend to put him around 14 yards uh, from the goal line extended above. If he's too high up, it's too far of a shot, too close, it's too easy for the defense. Coach makes a pass. Up top, we want this offensive player catching this ball in a ready position to shoot or be a dodger. On the pass, the defender drop step, sprints, and as he approaches, he's got to shorten his steps, chop down, and get in a breakdown position, and he's ready. If the defender's slow to get out there, we tell this offensive player, just bring the heat and rip it right by his ear. If he's fast to get out there and he doesn't break down, try to run right by him and make a dodge. So it's really a, a 1v1 drill, but with a, off of a pass to create more realistic situations, catching the ball, then rotate around, catch it, and go to the goal. So it's just a different way of doing a 1v1 drill, but I'm a big fan of it because I want to see how is the defender going from off ball to becoming on ball as he approaches, breaking down, getting his stick out in front, getting his hands on the offensive player. I like it for an offensive perspective as well. These, these men now have to catch the ball and evaluate decision making. Where is the defender? Is the defender on me? Do I have to dodge him? Is the defender off me? Do I just shoot the ball? So we'll go through the two examples. Coach Wilson will fire the ball to Nate Odell. He fires this ball on that pass. Go ahead. Todd Fiello will approach as fast as he can, but then he's got to break down once he gets there. If he can get a stick out on Nate Odell's gloves and hands, great. If Nate catches the ball and finds Todd already on him, the offensive player here, Nate, cannot shoot. So now he's got to make the decision, I've got to try to be a dodger. Maybe I split down the side as he just did. Maybe from here I try to roll back to the middle. Either way, it's a 1v1 drill. But I like it because, again, it's more of a team defensive slide package where Todd's got to make, he may have been the second or third slide in our defensive scheme, helped cover the crease. The ball's been thrown over the top to Nate Odell. He's got to fly back out to his man. Now it's 1v1. The second option that could happen here is, let's say Todd was a little slow to get out to Nate. When that ball arrived to Nate, Nate should make the decision, well, guess what? It's time to bring the hammer, 10, 12 yards, shoot the ball. Okay. So this is a general drill. We're going to go through a bunch of reps here. We ask this offensive player to catch the ball about 13, 14 yards. If he catches it too high up, he's, he's too far away to be a shooting threat. If he catches it too close, it's easy for our defender to get right on his hands. Okay, let's go through a bunch of reps. Great job by Nate, bad job by Todd breaking down. We got to get that breakdown, get our stick, get our hands on him. Go ahead. Nice way to drive. Everything was great there, Joe Orloff, until we tried to go over the head. Okay, keep driving, keep pushing him. Get a good job there. Here we go. Stop right there. A great fake by the offensive player there. Got number 44, Peter Fallon, to actually turn his side a little bit. We're asking our defensemen, you got to be brave in this drill. You got to sit there. All right. Get in that crouch stance. If he winds up, all right, get your stick on his hands. Nice take. Nice take. One more. Nice shot. Nice rip. The general drill can be done from different angles as well. Uh, in this one, we've had Coach Wilson feeding up top. We can also put the coach up top, feeding down low. We can put the coach on the opposite side, and the offensive players are catching left-handed. So you can maneuver the offensive players, the defensive players, and the outlets to be all over the, the field. We'll now add to this drill to make it a little more realistic. Over here, we're going to add a crease offensive player. Now it's the same drill. Coach has the ball here. He's still going to be looking to make this pass through the defense. Now this defenseman, while initially having to guard the crease, then does the same thing. Drop step, turn, sprint, and break down. The reason I like this drill is we do have the option of throwing the ball into the crease player as well. We keep this defenseman honest. We may be recreating a situation where this defenseman, he's guarding this midi up here, but due to a slide, he had to fill into the crease or crash into the crease, second or third slide in. Take care of the crease first. Every pass thrown in there, we should be chopping that stick. But what if the ball gets thrown through to your man? 
Well, turn, get out there as fast as you can, but don't get run by when you get there. Break down and play defense. For the drill, this becomes a 1v1 if we throw the ball up here, and now he's a dodger or a shooter right away. Now you've got to deal, Todd, with an offensive player. So what we're going to say, let's re recreating here is that's your man. Let's, let's, let's kind of walk through it here. Let's recreate that Joe Orloff, let's say you were guarding number 45, you were guarding the crease, and you said, I'm hot, and you slid, and our second slide was Todd. Okay, now, no, Joe, you disappear. We get rid of you out of the drill. This drill is now is recreating what happens now. Now we've second slid, we've come into the crease, We've left the furthest man open. What happens with this feeder? General drill, but now adding a crease player. So now what we have to ask you defenseman is, make sure we cover that crease first if Errol Wilson throws it in there, but also be ready if the ball gets thrown through to do just what we were doing with the general drill without the crease, turning, drop step, fly out there, break down, same decision making. Now for the purpose of this one, we don't allow that offensive player to throw the ball back into the crease since it's already it's three on one. We're not going to let you do everything. So we do restrict you there. Okay. Let's do a few of these reps. Nice take. Nice job by number 46 attacking and going right, right, to, the, uh, right to the goal. Here we go. Nice check, Peter. Another ball. Nice take. Jeffrey going back up top. Jeffrey, you need the crease. You should catch that ball right-handed. Uh, nice fake. Good check. It's a way to take him and push him down the side there. Mike Miller, nice shot, Jeffrey. Big save right there. Let me, uh, let me work on one thing here. What I want to see number 17 do, Jeffrey's right-handed. Catching that ball, I, I want to see 17 ready to check. That last one, you had your stick here, which I understand because you want to knock down that skip lane. But you got to be ready to chop that stick first. So you got to be straight above them, ready to chop that stick first. If you can do that and knock down skip passes, then you've taken your game to the next level. Nice shot, Nate. Oh, he got it in there. Come on, Peter. Got to own that stick. You got to chop that thing. Take that stick to the ground. Good. And we'll stop right there. Again, with uh, this version of the general drill, adding the crease player, this can be done in all sorts of angles. We can put the coach on the opposite side and feeding to the top left. We can have the coach up top feeding down the side so have a lot of fun with it build on this drill and uh, again first and foremost defense own the crease second then be ready to fly out to the outside two versus two adding another defender and another offensive player now is building upon our team defensive scheme development but with the two versus two drill this is a little more free-flowing Fewer rules, less regimented than some of the other drills you're going to see me put up on the board and you're going to see us do out in the field. Here, we're going to say, can you beat somebody offensively? Defensively, can you prevent a man from beating you? Off ball, can you rotate offensively into a good spot to be an outlet, to be a scoring threat? Defensively, do we need you to slide? Should you slide? Well, I love to do a lot of 2v2 here at Brown, and we'll change up the angles. In this first example, I've got the Dodger coming up top, and I've got an attackman in the crease. You can move over here. Sometimes we'll put the offensive players behind the goal. I've got a defenseman on the ball, another defender ready to slide from an adjacent position for this midfielder. Obviously, these offensive players, we don't want them standing still. He's going he's gonna to cut, move. So again, fundamentally, one of my favorite things to do is just play 2v2 because it emphasizes on ball. Can you beat somebody? Can you, not, can you prevent someone from beating you? and it emphasizes the off ball. How well can you get yourself in an offensive position to be open and defensively 
Should I be sliding? Can I slide? Can I guard my man? And can I see the ball? So it really breaks down the fundamental parts of on ball and the first slide part of our defensive slide scheme. 2v2. We do a lot of two versus two here at Brown University. Fundamentally, you've got an on ball defender and you've got someone who's got to be the help defender. In our slide scheme, we would call that the hot man. Uh, breaking it down as simple as possible. Two versus two. Offensively, can you beat somebody? And if you beat somebody, do you have a shot or are you throwing it to your teammate? Defensively, can you defend your man? And if we have to slide for you, can we slide in a way that doesn't allow a man to be wide open? So fundamentally, some of the, some of the, just keeps the things right to the basics and a thing we do a lot. Go ahead, we'll just do some 2v2 drills. And for purposes now, we're going to say no picks on the ball. Sometimes the ball just happens to find its way in. Good decision there. Todd got beat to the middle. Mike Miller, number 33, decided he had to go. Okay. The offense threw a bad pass. Somehow it went in. Here we go. Todd, you're hot. Break down, general drill. Good. What you saw right there was a decision to go hot by number three, Todd. 33, Mike Miller, then peeled off and recovered to the first pass, and that, that was the general drill right there. Approaching a, an offensive player who was catching the ball, got to be prepared to break down, take away the middle of the field. So we had to run through it, identify, Todd, you're hot. Good slide, nice shot. Okay, 2v2, we can attack from up top. Let's have uh, two, def two offensive players and two def new defenders go behind the goal. We'll have 2v2 from X. We'll have 2v2 from the wing. We can start with an offensive player in the crease, an offensive player at X. Now you start, we can, we'll, we'll have you start there. Just a lot of differences of where to start, but again, this is sort of my, almost my favorite drill. I don't really do, a, we don't do a lot of 1v1s at Brown. It always seems to be someone else involved because I want to see that decision making and talking off ball and offensively what we're doing. Let's do a couple reps from Rex. No picks yet. Here we go. Okay, stop right there. The first time 45 came around, good slide cross crease by number 44. Number 17 had been slid for, so he ran away, peeled off into the crease. We got matched up pretty quickly there. Nice job, nice slide, recovery. 45 then dodged again. We were able to defend it uh, on a bad pass. Two versus two with a pick on the ball. We have to make sure we review for our team scheme defense what happens if the offense brings a body to the ball, to the dodger? We have three things we can do to counter. One, the defense we can get through. Let me demonstrate that. Say this attackman has the ball. His opponent, his, his offensive teammate is coming over to set a pick. Defense can say get through. Our communicator is the defender who's off ball. Let's say we'll make him D2. On ball defender, D1, as this attackman approaches this pick, this defender says get through, and you'll see this better on the field with the body positioning. He wants to be about a yard or two off of his man and about a yard or two over. So if this pick is here, he wants to be right about there, giving room for D1 to get through, to get underneath that pick and get through it where this dodger comes hard off of that pick. Second option, we could do a switch. 
D1 on the ball. We've got D2, who's moving over while this man's been setting the pick. I want him to position himself same place, a couple yards off, a couple yards wide, with a switch call. The D1 will now let go of the man uh, he was guarding, the Dodger, releasing him and switching to guard the picker. D2 will now step up and guard the Dodger. Third thing we can do is we can double. We can jump it. If we decide to jump the pick, this is where D2 is. I'm going to erase this. D2 will sort of trail his man in initially, and then as that pick set, he's going to jump up and attack the ball carrier. D1, before where he was switching, will now trail the Dodger into D2, hopefully forming sort of the jaws and closing in on the offensive player. So three things we can do with a pick. We'll see that on, on the field a little better. We'll see the get through, the switch, and the jump. Defending the picks. Two versus two drill, now having the offense set picks on the ball. We have three different ways we, we deal attack with the picks on the ball. Right now we're gonna have 45, Nate Odell's gonna have the ball. For the purpose of these drills, we will set picks directly on the defender who's guarding the ball, number 17. Our off-ball defender is the talker. He's the one who makes the decisions of what we're going to do with that pick. A good offensive pick will sort of step in and then go towards the pick and establish himself right about there, let's say. Our off-ball defender, he's got to be the communicator. We ask our on-ball defender to take away a certain strength, to take away top side, to poke hands, to worry about the ball, we don't, have, we don't ask him to worry a lot about slide schemes and off-ball picks. So 44 Fallon is our talker. Note his positioning. Pretty good. We like to have our men not lined up right on top of our offensive player. And we don't have them straight here either. We like them to be offset by about a yard regardless of what we're going to do of our three options. Three things we can do with these picks. The first thing is get through. And we're going to demonstrate that right now. Joe Orloff on ball. As Nate runs off this pick and we're saying get through, Joe is going to get underneath the pick to stay on his man. So get through for us means stay on the man. Go on back. Notice our off ball, our communicator, Peter Fallon's positioning. We still have him over a yard. We do this in case our on ball defender, Joe Orloff, doesn't hear us, in case Joe gets picked off. Let's do that example. We're saying, watch the pick, get through, get through, go ahead, and he still gets picked. Well, by having Peter over to start a yard, if he sees this, we can make an emergency switch of men. Go on back. The get through call tells Joe, as the pick's arriving, he's got to turn his head and get through it. He also has to stop throwing checks. So as Nate's approaching it, you'll see Joe pick his stick up and then get through it. Come on back, well done. The second option that we have to deal with picks on ball is to switch. Again, we're going to ask Peter nice and loud and make the decision early. Let Joe Orloff, number 17, know now, not when it's already happened. If Joe knows right now, as Nate's running towards this pick to switch, he can anticipate it and he'll do some different things. If Joe knows he's going to switch, Joe will not play straight up with Nate. As Nate goes into a pick that Joe knows is being switched, he'll trail it in. He'll slow, he'll, he'll trail Nate into it, playing sides, knowing he's going to pick up 46. Go on back. 
So the more information the on-ball defender has early, the better. Our off-ball defender is almost going to do the same thing position-wise. He's going to be about a yard, a couple yards off, one yard or two yards wide. Watch the pick, watch the pick, switch, switch, here it comes. Switch, switch, Joe, switch. And now number 44 picks up the ball. And now he's got his stick on his hands and he's playing one-on-one -on -one defense. Playing the switch can also be called playing sides. I got left, you got right. Joe, you take right, I got left. But whatever it is, communicate it early. The third option we have is the jump, where we're going to jump the ball with both defensive players. Again, same rules. Communicate it early. Watch the pick, Joe. Jump, jump. If Joe knows we're jumping right away, that allows Joe to prepare it. With the jump, we're going to double the ball as the ball comes off this pick. Nate comes off this pick. Peter says jump, and now we're going to attack it. It's an aggressive way to play the ball. It's an attacking against a team that maybe sets a lot of picks and you want to put a heavy pressure on the ball. Some of the things that we'll do, the on-ball defender here, Joe, similar to switching, is going to trail Nate into the pick. But he's also going to step up and play a little more aggressive and get on Nate's back. Anticipating Nate seeing 44 jumping and doubling and Nate maybe saying, oh geez, I got to roll away and there's Joe right on his back, and now we squeeze him. A little more aggressive from Peter when he's saying jump, similar to a switch. He's got that same positioning, here it comes, watch the pick, jump, jump, but now he's going to really jump upfield and stop Nate's momentum and try to anticipate and force Nate to move back into Joe, and now we've got our double team. The three things we can do with picks on ball. Get through, switch, and jump it. Now we're creating a drill where the offensive dodger, once he draws a slide, has to throw the ball to a non-guarded, non-offensive threat, an outlet. This first example, we're going to have a midi dodge from up top. If during his dodge, if he can draw a slide, we're going to make him throw the ball to the outlet down the wing. The reason for this, I want the team defense to be working on recovery. Recovery is the term used for us when we're saying, hey, the man on ball who was slid for, if D-Hot, our hot man, slides for you, we need you to now recover and get the team defense back to 6v6, because temporarily, we've got two of you on the ball, it's it's five on four behind you. We got to get you to recover and guard this as fast as you can. By making the offense throw the outlet, it gives us time to see can we get you to get in there as fast as you possible and guard, find the open man, which is the attackman. So for the purpose of the drill, what you see on the field is you'll see the midi dodge throw it to the outlet and then the outlet person, he can throw it in to the crease attack defensively. Can we go fast enough? Can we recover fast enough to guard that and get matched back up and make it 2v2 again? We'll do this drill from a top dodge. Move over here and show you where we can do this drill with a wing dodge. Now we'll have a midi dodge this wing. Same concept. We've got a hot man ready to go. If this midi does a good enough job and he beats the defender and he draws a slide, we don't let him throw the ball right into the crease. He's got to throw the ball to X, to an outlet back here, and now he can look into the crease. How quickly can we recover as a defense? Can this defender, once he's been slid for, fly in here, match back up, and cover that crease, and defend before a pass is thrown in there and they get an easy shot on the goal? 2v2 with an outlet. At Brown University, we use the two versus two outlet drill to work on the recovery of our defense. And the, what I mean by the recovery is the defender on ball, number 44, Peter Fallon up there is guarding 45. When we slide for him, 
We want to we need him to get into the crease as fast as possible. So this drill evaluates his recovery. So what we have is we have two versus two. We've got a crease player, 46, with Joe Orloff hot. And we've got an outlet. For the purpose of the drill, we'll, we'll jog through this. If Nate dodges and he draws a slide, Joe says go and slides, we don't let Nate throw the ball in the crease. We go, go ahead and move back. Right about there. Stop, 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 stop. We don't let Nate throw the ball into the crease. Nate can only throw it to the outlet. Now the outlet player, he can throw it into the crease. What we're evaluating here is how quickly has 44 been slid for, peeled, recovered, and matched us back up, and we've guarded the crease successfully. Go ahead. Okay. Not a bad recovery by number 17 getting in there. 646 was open. Let's get a better pass. Okay, Joe Orloff, let's hear the communication. You're hot. I'm hot. Okay. Dodge coming up top center. Here we go. Nice handle. We got to chop that stick. Peter Fallon, 44, did a nice job recovering getting in there, but still able to make that handle. Okay. Here we go. Good, nice job. Right there, what I had the crease offensive player 46 do was during the dodge and the pass down the side, go ahead, Jeffrey, show it again. I had Jeffrey do a high seat cut to make himself more of an outlet. And Joe Orloff did a nice job of just finding 46 and not worrying about anything else. Critical with the slide schemes is when you've been slid for, when you're running into the crease, don't look at the ball. I've oftentimes done this drill and I've seen people slid for, they stare at the outlet. Don't stare at the outlet. Look right in here. Let's do a couple more reps. I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot. Good. Okay. We can also change this angle here. Let's get, uh, let's get a dodger. Uh, Mike Miller, go to X. You be an outlet at X. Get the do let's dodge the wing now. So it's the same drill. We're just going to have an outlet at a different spot. Okay, Peter Fallon, you're still hot, 44. Here we go. It's a hell of a handle. Nice handle there. Okay, nice crease cut. Again, by 46, trying to get around him. Peter Fallon did a nice job. Well done, fellas. 2v2 with an outlet. Three versus three. Adding the third offensive player and defensive player now brings in the second slide. This first sample here, we're going to do a drill outside. Midfielder dodging up top, D0, can also stand for DO, D on ball. D1, our hot man, our first slide. D2, our two-man, our second slide, with an offensive player in the crease and a second offensive player in the wing. I like to line this right up to make it simple at first, the first time we do three and three, to make it real easy for the men to see who's the hot and who's the two, who's the fill. What you'll see here is during this dodge, we've got our hot man and then our fill man. I like to use two lines to demonstrate the second slide. Our hot man goes, here comes our fill, our recovery man now has to follow his rules, find the open guy. And at first, we just say, hey, you f if you have to run all the way through the backside, you run all the way to the backside. You'll see this on the field. Communication, I'm hot, who's my two, who's my fill? This fill man, the two man, I'm the two, you can go, you can go, I've got you. That extra terminology makes us a better team, makes us better trust. What you'll also see on the field here is once this dodge happens, is now I may ask this offensive player to then reset himself and attack again. What I like to get is the defense to get a lot of reps without a lot of rest in between. What you can see now is D1 
is now on the ball, D2 is now in the crease, and D0, who was on ball, is now back here. Everyone's roles have changed. If the offense were to dodge again now, D1 is now the on-ball player. D2 has to be saying, I'm hot, and I want to hear as soon as he can recognize, hey, you're in the crease. You just filled in. Great. Talk about being hot right away. And D.O., yeah, you just did a great job of recovering and finding the open man. But guess what? we got a new slide coming. We've got to be ready for the re-attack. And so in this situation, if, you, if he finds himself back here, he's got to be ready to be that fill defender. So you'll see that on a field. Quick reps, identifying, and then re-identifying within about after the first dodge, ready for the second dodge. We can do this 3v3 drill a number of different ways. In the second example, we're going to have an offensive attackman to dodge us from behind the goal. Here, what we're going to demonstrate is the slides coming from cross crease. We're going to have D1 be our hot defender. He's going to be ready to slide cross crease. This term being coming from an adjacent, because essentially he, he's not the crease, he is an adjacent defender, coming from the backside pipe. During this dodge, offensive player comes up here, and let's say we do a good job, we force him to inside roll. Now the terminology. This defender, D1, is our hot man. Our second slide would be, in this situation, D2 coming out of the crease. So this is one of those combo slides. Adjacent first, crease is our second slide. And he'd be ready to second slide back to M1 if the pass is made to the backside. And again, we'll show this on the field where I want this to be continuous. I want this to continual flow. Once this pass is made to M1, I want the defenders to know immediately what's your new role. Well, the defender who was on ball initially, his job, again, if you're the recovery man, you've been slid for, you've got to run into the crease and find a man. So he's going to fly into that crease and now guard M2. In this situation, he's just become the fill man. D1 was hot this way. He may, be ready. He may need to be hot again going the other way when M1 catches the ball and re-dodges. You'll see this on the field. We do it a lot here. We'll sometimes do this at about 75% speed. It's always better to go 100% to get the live reps. But when you're first teaching this, if you can have the offense do this at 75%, you get more clean passes and more re-dodging, and so you get more reps for the team defense. And again, you'll see that out on the field for us. Three versus three. As we build the team defensive schemes from one versus one to two versus two, now we're going to add that third offensive player and third defensive player what gets introduced now with our team scheme is the second slide. Now we've got a hot man and a two man, number 17. So with the dodge coming up top center, being guarded by number three, Peter Fallon, what are you saying? I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. And we to ask Peter to ask for who's my two? Who's my second slide? Joe Orloff, number 17, is his two slide. Joe, what are you saying? I'm the, I'm the two. I'm the fill. And he can be talking to Peter. Peter, you can go. I've got you. You're hot. I've got you. You can go. The more communication between these two, the more trust. And the more trust, the better chances when we do slide, we're not leaving somebody wide open in the crease. So we're just going to jog through this drill at this point. We've got a dodger up top. Peter's hot, there's a fill. Let's say we decide to go. Go, stop right there. And there, Joe Orloff has filled into the crease. Sticks in on the crease man right there, covering it up. We've left the furthest man open, number 39, Mike, but it's fine for now. Take care of the most dangerous and cover that up from there. Good, so now what to do with number three. With our rules at Brown, when you've been slid for in that recovery, You've got to find the open man. For the purpose of this drill, Todd may just fly right all the, all the way over to number 39, and now we're matched back up. We have some other ways of doing our recovery, but we'll keep it simple now for this three versus three drill. Now what we can do if we're just jogging through this, and it's a good way to teach this, is now just have number 46 run back up like he's dodging again. 
And what am I looking for? I'm looking for my hot man, who's now Joe Orloff, a different person. And there's Todd number three, is the Phil. Go ahead, go, Phil, recover, bang, okay? Now, go ahead and jog back up there and re-dodge for us. Good, go back up there and redo it. There's our hot, there's our Phil. Who's my? Good, and stop right there. We could do this full speed with a ball. It's obviously more realistic. But what I like to do is slow this down. The way we just did the drill there, a man went from being hot to being on ball to then recovering to be Phil. So each player learns the different roles as we go through this scheme. We can now move the players around. Let's have the... Uh, Two offensive players go behind. Let's keep Nate in the crease. We can go 3v3 from behind. Now, slide schemes here. Ball's going to be here with 46. We could have a couple different slide schemes. We could have a cross crease hot man, number three, or we could have a hot man be number 17. If threes are a hot man, our second slide is going to be number 17 from the crease. And vice versa. If we decide Joe, number 17, is going to be our hot, for the purpose of this drill, you would have to be our fill. In a 6v6 picture, we may have other defenders who could sag in. So again, let's re let's re for right now, let's work on a cross-crease slide scheme. Okay. So we're going to ask Jeff Foote to dodge hard. Okay. Go, go, go. Bang. Good. 44 was slid for. He peeled off, recovered into the crease. Joe Orloff was ready to fill behind. Good slide on ball. Okay. Go ahead and do it again. Go ahead. Good. Okay. Stop right there. This is why it's a teaching drill. Okay, so what was missed there is when 39 then re-dodged the other side of the field, Joe's got to stop. Joe's got to recognize that he's hot. And he's got to communicate that. Talk to Todd, who's my fill? On that inside roll, he can go. There's our fill. Peter Fallon bumps and flies in with a recovery. Okay? Let's reset that up. Okay, right away, Joe. You're hot. Good. Stop right there. Stop right there. Well done. Well done. So the, the advantages of slowing these drills down is you can see the continual flow and the continual terminology is the decision-making of the defenseman. Well done there. 3v3, second slide coming from the top down. Now this drill, we're going to, again, just have three versus three, but we're going to emphasize a scheme we use at times where we have our D midfielders be the second slide from top down into the crease. For the purpose here, we may put our offensive middies two up top, a midi in the crease or an attackman in the crease. Here we've got an attackman. During this dodge, we're still coming hot from the crease. D1 is still hot. Now the second slide is going to come from a top-down defender into the crease. Recovery, run into the crease. If we want you there, we'll sprint you there. If that's already covered, go find the open man, which in this case, he'd be standing right there. Advantages to the top-down slide scheme, you're giving up outside shots, you're taking care of the crease, you're taking care of a lot of this. Disadvantages, a lot of times these defenders up here are middies. And sometimes we don't work with our middies as much as we should on team defense. Now we're trusting a short stick midi who may be more offensive minded, maybe thinking about the last shot he just took, than thinking about team defense. We need to get him in there. So we got to, if you're going to practice uh, this, practice it a lot and then utilize it uh, with only the men you know you can trust to make sure they get that second slide into the fill. Three versus three, 
slide scheme development versus top dodges. What I want to go through now is second sliding with a midfielder from up top down in. We can demonstrate with number 46 has the ball here. We can have a fill defender, the second slide defender, number 44, coming from the top from a midfield down. This would be a, a midfield second slide. So to walk through this, Joe Orloff's our hot man. During a dodge, he would still slide hot from the crease, but our second slide comes from the top midfielder down in. Okay, just as he did, and then we have a recovery, which in this case, he can recover up to the open man and cover that right there. Let's bang the ball to Nate. Same thing. Now it comes the other way. Peter Fallon's hot. Who's Phil right now? Joe, you talk about it. Talk about being Phil right now. He's at second slide. He's telling Peter, you can go. I've got you. This is a different type of slide scheme. Sliding with your middies being a second slide. Instead of using the fender down here to, to uh, second slide in. The concerns with this is you're often relying on middies to do the second slide, which is a very important slide, leaving number 39 wide open in the crease if we don't get there. Uh, the advantage is with this top-down second slide scheme is you tend to cover up the crease and the low stuff, giving up outside shots. And if you have confidence in your goalie, you can do this. For example, let's go through this one. Nate dodges down the side. Stop right there. We're leaving an, a top def offensive player open while number three recovers. If they've got big time outside shooters, maybe this isn't the slide scheme, but it can be a good slide scheme if you have a lot of confidence in your goalie and maybe the offensive opposition doesn't have the great outside shot. Okay, go ahead and re-dodge it, demo it a little bit more. Good, go ahead, re-dodge it. Joe, you're Phil, get in there, Joe. Good. Recover away. Joe, you're hot. Go. Good. And stop right there. Stop right there. Well done. 3v3 with an outlet. Now we're going to add a fourth offensive player who's not a part of the scheme. He is just going to be an outlet where we move the ball through. I like these outlets because, again, it, it gives us a little bit of realistic time that we'd see more in a 6v6 situation of the defense sliding, recovering, matching back up, and then re-identifying who's the new hot, who's the new two. This example, I love to use this drill a lot, defending the wing dodge. We're going to have an offensive midfielder dodge a wing. Again, we've got our hot coming from the crease. D2, our backside, is going to be our second slide. He's going to fill in to the crease. During the dodge, hopefully we force him underneath. There's our hot. Here comes our fill. What we ask offensively is we give them an outlet. Now, we do allow them to throw the ball in the crease. If the crease is open, go ahead and throw it in there in a, in a 3v3 with one outlet drill. You know, we should be able to defend that. We have that second de defender filling into the crease. So we do give the option of throwing in there if it's open. If we do defend it well, the best look for the offense should be to throw the ball through X. And now he can take a look. If for some reason the crease is open, he can throw the ball in the crease. That's fine. If the defense is still covering the crease, leaving this backside midi wide open, that tends to be where the ball will then move next. This is the recovery that we've talked about. The defense has done well with the initial dodge. How quickly can we recover? Well, for us, the defender who was on ball now flies back in once he's been slid for. Here comes a new term. He can fly all the way over to the far midfielder, or that term, bump. And for us, that's a term used by a defender who's filled into the crease. If this defender fills into the crease and he can see the on-ball defender who's recovering, if he can see him coming towards him, 
we ask the D2, in this case, to use the term bump that tells that DO to come to my voice and allow me to bump back out. The bump makes our recovery quicker. You'll see a bunch of examples out in the field of our defense using the bump term. We don't always use it. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. If this attackman, during the initial dodge, let's say he cut to the near pipe, making the fill go all the way down here with him, well, it may not make sense for the recovery man to go down here and the fill man to go up. It may just make more sense for the recovery man to fly through. So it's something they've got to make a decision on split second on the field. The drill now continues, and this is where, why I really like the 3v3 with one outlet drill, is once the ball now ret returns to the back side, he re-dodges. Who's the new hot man? Well, if we've bumped, DO is now in the crease. He's the hot man. Who's the fill man? Well, it's D1, who was the initial hot slider, is now on this backside wing. He now has to turn and recognize he's the fill. See a lot of good examples on the field with this. Three versus three with an outlet. Now what we're going to ad adapt is the team defense to slide schemes with the defense recovering off of a pass made to an outlet. We'll start off with a dodge from the right wing here, from Nate Odell. We've got a hot defender. We've got a fill second slide coming from number three. The offense, when you do this drill, if you want to do this live, and I, we would typically do this 100%, he's got to make a decision whether he should slide or not. If that slide does happen, the offense is required to throw the ball into to the, to X, to our outlet, Coach Wilson, at X. So let's say we've drawn the, we've drawn the slide, we've filled. Stop. Slow down. If I can't let the ball go, I can't let you go. He throws the ball to X. Now, stop right there. Now we've got to work on our recovery, because right now there's a wide open offensive player over there, number 46, and we've covered the crease here. This is 6v6 offense and defense. How quickly can the offense move the ball to the backside, redirect it? How quickly can the defense recover after putting two men on the ball, getting to the backside? This is where we start building up the next part of our team slide package, the terminology we use, okay, for saying, hey, let's bump this, where Peter Fallon is running in to bump, cover, bump. Todd Fael uses the word bump, that tells Peter, come to me, bump me, I'll go guard the backside, while Errol Wilson's throwing that ball to the backside. Here comes the dodge backside here. There it goes, uh, go, hot, fill, backside, here we go. Let's flow it. Go ahead. Good. You got a hot. Phil. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Well done. Well done. For the purpose of this drill, doing it at this speed, I'm asking the defenseman to go hot every time. We have other drills where we make decisions on should you, be, should you have gone or should you have not gone as a hot man. For the purpose of this drill, to get more reps in it, if they slide every time, that works great for us. What you could see there is some of the times the men were using the bump terminology, and at others they didn't. If Nate's got this ball and he's dodging and Joe slides and Todd fills into this crease here as a second slide, but maybe this is a great crease offensive player. Maybe this is one of the best finishers in the country and he cuts hard to this crease. We're not going to sort of pass him off. He may just stay locked on him. This is too important of a man to leave open. If Peter hears nothing, Peter's just got to fly and recover himself. Okay, come on back, Peter. But then what you saw a, few, a lot more examples of there was Todd second sliding in when Joe's left, 
using the term bump, 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 pass off, this is a much quicker way for our defense to slide and recover with our team defensive schemes. So there you go, three versus three with an outlet. 4v4, dodging. Adding the fourth offense player and fourth defenseman, the best drill I like to do with this is a perimeter rotation. We're putting, putting the offensive players in the horn positions, in the four positions outside. Defense, one defending each man. What we like to do is, for the purpose of this drill, we may come out of this low right corner for the first five or six minutes. We can then change where we do this initial dodge from. Come from the low left, we can come from a top position. But let's start down here. So we'll give this attackman the ball. We've got D0, standing for D on ball. D1, which in this case, because there is no crease, we have to slide adjacent. And, we, and this happens in a real game. We may be thinking we're a crease sliding defense against this opponent. Well, if there is no crease, well, then you have to go to your adjacent slide scheme. So we're going to practice our adjacent slide schemes versus the four-man perimeter 4v4 dodge. So for here, we've got D1 ready to be hot to slide cross crease. D2 is ready to be our second slide, our fill. D3 could be ready to be that third slide. I'll demonstrate this one. If we do a good job defending this on-ball dodge, and if we can force him to then inside roll and not beat us top side, our hot would come cross crease. If the offense makes the one more pass, the open player, then have our second slide down the back side, our third slide across, and our recovery man, our defender who was on ball, who did a good job of forcing the inside roll, then running back and matching back up and finding the open man, which in this case would be this man. I love this drill because now what happens, it's a lot of reps. The on-ball on defender and the attacking offensive player, once this repetition is done, whether there's a shot's been taken, uh, a goal's been scored, turnover, these two men now move to this spot. These two men, D3 and M, move to this spot. D2 and M move to that spot. These two men move to the end of the line. And so without a lot of eight men running in and out of the game just because of one rep, we will just go continuously, boom, next rep. And I'm, I'm on them, blowing the whistle quickly, and these defenders now have to recognize, okay, what's my new role? I was hot. You know, I was the crash, now I'm maybe the fill. I'm the second side, now I'm, now I'm in a hot position. So they, they go from being from different positions to a different position quickly and have to do the communication and talk through it. Four versus four slide scheme. This is a drill we're gonna work on our perimeter slash adjacent slide scheme. Drill we do all the time here at Brown. Where Nate Odell is with a ball we would have all of our extra offensive and defensive players coming out of that corner. Now as Nate's going to be the initiator from a low right position as a goalie would see it, we're going to have four, versus, we're going to have four total four perimeter offensive players, two up top, one more down low. We'll give them some freedom to move around if they see something wide open to sort of step into space, but for, the, for now, we're gonna say, we're gonna sort of treat this as a 2-2-2 two, two, two offense. Don't cut in too much in the crease because there's some imaginary offensive players in here. Defensively, now we get to work on our adjacent slide scheme. Right now, with Joe Warloff on that ball, let's say, Nate, you can just sort of jog up into it, more of a threatening position. We've got two adjacent defenders. Both of them could be hot. We've got number 33, Mike Miller, ready to be our cross crease hot. And we've got 44 to be our, ready to be our top down hot defender in his face. So both of them in this drill would be saying they're hot. This defender, what would he be saying? Phil. He's our Phil. He's our second slide no matter what. No matter which defender leaves, he's our second slide. Let's say we slide, let's say we get beat top side, which we're not supposed to do. Peter Fallon goes hot. Move the ball, Nate. There's our Phil from Todd. 
Here's our third slide. The crash and our recovery away to finding the open man. Okay? Let's have let's throw the ball back to Nate. Let's go through that one more time. Again, we've got Hots. Our Phil. Go, go, go. Go. go, go, go. Perimeter as the ball moves around the outside. Our recovery scheme, our slide and recovery scheme is a perimeter scheme here. Again, this is what we're working on our adjacent slides here. Okay, let's get the ball back to Nate. For the purpose of this drill, what I like to do with it is you move with your partner. Again, we have a lot of excess people behind Nate there. When Nate goes against Todd and the drill, something happens, let's say Todd takes the ball away and the drill's over, now you rotate to the next spot in the drill we say, Todd and Nate, you go up there. Coach Wilson and Coach Miller, you got that spot. There we go. Jeff and Joe take the low spot. And then whoever was the low spot, Matt and Peter, would then go to the end of the line. Obviously, today we only have eight men out here, so they're, they're up next. High continuous flow. Therefore, defenders, the reason we're always moving the defenders with our drills is I don't want them always being in the same spot, understanding only one part, whether it's being the hot or the fill. I always want them to be in different spots and getting a lot of reps. Okay, with this rep, what I want to see is let's use the cross crease slide. Okay, let's hear the talk. Fill and recover, good. Go ahead. You could dodge here. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. There, we didn't have a slide, and that was fine. That was fine. So, again, for this drill, we've added that third slide. And the terminology for that can be three, could be crash. Let's, go, let's talk through that one. Here we go. As Jeff Foote dodges here, and he inside rolls, and we go hot cross crease, there's our hot. There's our fill. Here's our third slide, our crash, when the balls move through X to make sure we get to Coach Wilson there. Good. So the 4v4 perimeter slide scheme drill, I like it because, again, it works on our adjacent slides, whether it's in the face or cross crease. We'll come from that corner. You can come from the other low left corner. You can start from top left. We can start the drill top right. Variety, but again, I like to move with your partner so you get just more reps and getting in different spots. 4v4 drill. Now we're going to emphasize the top down fill scheme. The second slide come from the top down. Demonstrating a scheme here where there's three middies up top, an offensive set we're seeing more and more of in the last couple of years. One crease, and for the purpose of a 6v6 scheme, they probably have two offensive players behind the goal. This would be a drill we would rep if we were going to practice our top-down second slide scheme. Dodge coming from here. Again, on-ball defender with the dodger. Extra players who are going to then be the next one to step in and dodge. Have the line up there. Offensive player in the crease. Defender here. He's going to be our hot. Now we've got a choice of who can be that second slide scheme. We've got D2, which in this case we can use for We'll identify him and say, hey, we'll, let's second slide from the backside wing. Hot. Fill down. So with that off, initial dodge, the offense will, ideally for a defense, will not see a wide open crease because we've second slid and covered it. What they will see is temporarily, if you block all this off, it's a two-on-one up top. So the question is, how quickly can the offense move that ball up here versus how quickly can we recover and defend against that? Again, the man has been beat. He's going to run into the crease. If we see it's covered, then he may run up here and guard one of these two. What you're going to see on the field when we do some examples of this drill is the defense hopefully talking to each other. We could use the bump talk. Maybe D2 uses the bump talk and asks for D0 to come to my voice and bump 
D2 back up, or we may not use the bump talk and we may start pointing. And we use a lot of those nonverbal cues to find the open guy. D3 may be responsible for this. D3 may, may be pointing DO to go all the way to the far midi, or D3 may see that it's simpler for DO to just come here, and he pushes back, and we've matched back up. Again, 4v4, it's a great sort of drill to do where you're working on your slide recovery. How quickly can we slide, recover, and be back to being all even? Purpose of this drill, you can go 100% live, have them smash each other, or if you want to do it 75%, have this dodger dodge, take a look, the defense has to slide, and then he resets himself and goes again. And don't reset for 10 seconds. Don't give the defense much time. Make it more realistic in a game where they've got to slide, recover, and then be ready to reslide again. So the 4v4 drill with a top down fill. 4v4, top dodge. Now this is a drill where we have all the offensive players involved above the goal as well as the defensive players. We've gotten rid of the defenders behind the goal. This is allowing us to practice our second slide coming from up top from the middies down. Of course we have to because there are no defenders down here. So for the purpose here for the example we're gonna have number 46 be the top uh, the top right there. He's the dodger. Our hot here is coming from the crease. Peter number 44. Our second slide can come from either one of these other two defenders up top. Again the advantage is to sliding from top down is we can keep our low defenseman on the attackman, maybe the opposing offense's best players who are sneaking around the crease and it takes the sticks, takes the ball out of their stick. And it gives up outside shots, which if you have a strong goalie is a great thing. The disadvantage is again though is these might be offensive middies who are playing defense for us who just went down on a fast break come back on defense, are they really thinking defensively? So you've got to train them a lot. So we do a lot of drills with our middies, teaching them the slide package, making sure they know how to second slide down in. Pur purpose here, maybe we'll, we'll say we'll pick Todd, the backside wing, against this umbrella set, the three middies up top. We'll say, Todd, you're our fill, you're our second slide for this package. So we'll jog through this one, okay? We go hot, fill, He could cover that way. Dodge from up top, top left here. Okay, stop right there. What you can see, the defenders up top are doing a great job of talking to the on-ball defender, the original on-ball defender of where to go. We get that ball back there to Jeff Foote. We're doing a nice job with our hot from Peter 44 and our fill from Todd. Go ahead, let's show that part. Now, what do we do with the, the defender who's been beat, who we've slid for? We've got we've to tell him where to go. Now, if we tell him to come to the crease, if we say bump, he'll come to the crease. And then Todd would then, number three, would then push out and guard somebody else. Come on back, Todd. We could, we could just point Mike Miller, number 33, the on-ball defender who was beat, as Mike, as you start running in, you could point to him. Point to a player to go to. This is the critical part of a good team defense. We've slid, we've taken two men, put two men on one man. They're one guy with the ball. How quickly from there can we recover and balance back off and get to 6v6 or for the purpose of this drill, 4v4? Okay, let's do a couple more reps. Let's say we're gonna, let's, let's uh, second slide from the top center now. Here we go. Joe, you're Phil? So you're hot. Okay, we'll stop right there. So with the uh, offensive set that has three middies up top, 
And if you're going to try this midfielder down slide scheme, you've got a choice. You can either have the fill come from the center defender or have the second slide fill coming from the backside defender. 4v4, top dodge. On ball positioning. Uh, I could spend a lot of time talking about on ball positioning, but for the purpose of the team defensive slide scheme development video, I just want to review the basics. Dodger here. I've drawn lines to define the middle of the field and just, about, just above the top of the crease, the top side. We want to force a Dodger to stay on the side he's come. We don't want to give up the middle of the field. So with the defender lining up, we'll ask the defender to not line up in a straight line between the goal and his man, but to take a step or two to the middle, to the inside, to have his body positioning force the Dodger to go down the side and not beat us to the middle. Critical for our team defensive slide schemes because we want to know where's the Dodger going to beat us if, he's, if, if he does beat us. We, the hot man, it makes it a lot easier for our packages if he knows, okay, the slide, when I slide, it's going to be here, not over here to the middle of the field. Especially critical if we're coming with an adjacent slide scheme. If we're coming with an adjacent slide scheme and my adjacent defender's here, well, if we can force him down the side into him, Perfect, but it's a, we're going to have a heck of a time for an adjacent defender to slide if this, if this midi beats us to this side. We're going to have to rely on a different defender in that case, and it throws off our defensive slide schemes. Taking away top side, I'm going to move down over here. Now, let's say we've got a dodge coming from the, along the GLE. We want this defenseman to take the top side away. So top side meaning we do not want this midi to beat us above the GLE, above. Instead, we want him to force him underneath and keep him under here where he can be less of a goal scoring threat. Third position to dodge from, if an attackman dodges from X or a midfielder in an invert situation, again, we want to use this line. We don't want this offensive player beating us around and coming around the goal this way. If this man were to dodge, and get close to the GLE or a little bit above it, if he was going to beat us, we would want him to inside roll and be forced underneath. Again, forcing these Dodgers under where they cannot be goal scorers, only feeders. So therefore, if we do have to slide, we're in a better position as a defense. Now the big picture, 6v6. A lot of choices, a lot of variety that you as a defensive coach can implement with your men depending on how much time you have to practice it and do it right. A variety of different slide packages come from the drills and putting them in and doing as best you can to make sure the men understand them as best as possible. I'm going to give you a sample here. We call this a 1-3-2, one, three, one, three offensive players, two up top. I count from X. The slide package is here. Again, it could be crease-crease. First slide coming from the crease. We could have a hot defender coming here, second slide coming from the back side. We say crease, crease, but it's insinuating backside crease. This second, these other defenders, let's say this is D2, should be sagged into the backside crease none anyways. So a crease, crease could be hot there, second slide in there. We can, we can play around with this. We, we've shown some drills where we're going to second slide from the midi top down. So here's our hot man, crease, but we may top down from adjacent. So this would be crease adjacent, top down. Hot, second slide down in. We can combo this. We could come from the crease with the second slide and come from an adjacent with the first slide. Make this defender hot. And, I, and tell the crease man, hey, you're the second slide. Again, we talked about trusting that we force the man down the side. We come from an adjacent defender hot. We second slide from the crease out. And now in this scheme, there is a third slide. There is a crash. We're going to have to rely on a backside defender. Could be either one of these two. Let's say we use the furthest one away. D3 to be that third slide to crash into the crease. 
Another variety is we could perimeter rotate and do both the first, second, third slides all around the outside. Almost sort of a zone type scheme where now we go D1 is hot and our second slide is going to come from the next defender, next adjacent defender around the horn. Hot, second slide, fill, third slide, this direction, etc. And in this case, this defender would just be staying on the crease and locking the crease, not even leaving the crease. But obviously continuing, for the purpose of this drill, there may be a four slide as he rec then the recovery man peels away. So a little bit of a sample there of showing with some creativity and depending on what your opponent is good at, if he's got a great crease, maybe you don't want to leave the crease ever. But then you can combine some packages to keep the offensive coordinator uh, of the opposition on his toes and not knowing exactly where that slide scheme is coming from. But the key is make sure your men know what they're doing so they're not confused and they've got it sound principles of the good team, slide, the team sliding scheme. In this clip, we're first going to see a pick on the ball. Our opponent, opponent's going to bring a pick to the on-ball defender. We do a simple switch right there to keep pressure on the ball. Now as the offense moves the ball around, they're going to reset a dodge from the top left corner. We're going to come hot. Our first slide is from the crease. Our second slide is going to be a backside high defender. You'll also see our top center defender sneak in there as well. We give up a shot down the angle, down the side, and we make the save. In this example, we're sliding adjacent. Notice in the crease, we're stick to stick. We're much tighter in the crease. The defenders on the perimeter are prepared to slide. That first dodge, we did not need to slide. In the second dodge, you'll notice now the opposing offensive player, 35, creates a little bit of space here. Now, here's our hot defender, number 19, our second defender, is our, is our second slide. And you can see in the crease we're much tighter. So obviously we're not sliding from the crease. This is our adjacent slide scheme. We start to go, we're able to check the crease and take care of that. This example starts with another pick on the ball. We switch men, easily there. Now, as the ball moves up top, we move into an adjacent slide scheme. We're sliding from the perimeter. With this dodge here, I'll stop it right here to show there's our first slide. He's, he's gone hot from the adjacent. That's his man. The second slide, number 42, is going to slide cross crease. The third slide now has to be number 15 as he slides off his man, 16, down the back side, down the back pipe to cover this next pass. So what you've seen us do is one, two slides. Number 15 will make our third slide. Unfortunately, our opponent moves the ball so well, we need a four slide from number four, he doesn't make the slide, UMBC makes his pay. Here's another example of an adjacent slide scheme. There's our first slide, number 19, prepared to slide in the face of the Dodger. As once the ball's passed to number 19's man, we then have a second slide here. Number 15 is gonna be prepared to make the third slide. Our fourth slide will come from the bottom back pipe up. There's a third slide, fourth slide, and we, we match back up and survive the initial dodge. Here's an example of a crease sliding defense. Our hot defender is above his man, good position, sticks towards his man, but his body's above, ready to be a slide. We've got a second defender in the crease, ready to cover the crease. What will happen here is a third defender, the man guarding X, will slide into the crease and make the check when the pass is made in there. Nice slide and a good second slide creating a turnover. In this example we're going to see the opposing offense dodges from behind. Our hot man comes from the crease with a crease sliding defense and the second slide comes from furthest away. We have two defenders to choose from to collapse into the crease giving up the top if they can make it pass through which the offense does in this example and gets a nice outside shot but again we're forcing the outside shot the shot we want to give up 
In this clip, we're going to see an example of a pick on ball where we get through it. Notice the defender who's off ball, number 47, drops off his man, the man setting the pick, and gives about a four yard lane for the on ball defender to get through. The, one of the advantages of getting through the picks is you keep your matchups. We get through the pick well, do a nice job. Our, offense, our opposing offense reattacks right away, though. This is critical now. We've got to recognize immediately who's hot, who's our first slide, who's the fill, who's the second slide, and in this case, you're actually seeing an example of a third slide. Here we've got our hot defender ready to go. We've got a second man in the crease ready to second slide, and then this top defender must get himself in, make that third slide, and you'll see a great example of this. There's our hot fill, and we've covered the crease as well with our third slide. This leaves open the furthest man away. Our, the opposing offense does a nice job of finding that man with this pass. And now number four, the defender does a great job of flying out, breaking out under control, and not giving up the middle and forcing this dodger down the side, giving me a lower angle shot. Here's a clip showing an example of a crease sliding defense with a second slide coming from up top down into the crease. The first part of the dodge here, you're going to notice our defender, the hot crease man, is ready to go, but recognizes he doesn't have to go the full way, so he stops and recovers back to his man. The opposing offense moves the ball quickly to the back side and reattacks right away. This is critical for the defense to know, immediately go to a different scenario. Okay, now who's hot? Who's the second slide? You'll see this defender who's being brought into the crease becomes hot. Again, if we're second sliding from the top down, number 15 needs to get down into that crease, which he does in this example. The defender who's been beat runs away. We match back up 6v6. Now, again, the opposing offense attacks right away, not giving us much time to set up. So we as a defense have to recognize right away who's hot. In this scheme versus a dodge from behind, we're going to slide cross crease with a second slide coming from the back side. Here we go, we play pretty good on-ball defense. Our second slide recognizes that the on-ball player does not see him, and we can sneak up on be from behind and create a turnover. Here, we're ready to slide from the crease. We've got a crease defenseman here ready to be hot on the left pipe. We also have a right crease defender who could be hot. For this scheme, we decided to come from the left. The second slide, we've got a defender at X or a defender on the backside wing. Here we decide to select second slide from the backside wing into the crease. As I roll the tape forward, you can see the hot starts to go. There's the hot man, and our second slide is now covering the backside crease because we forced the dodger to his left hand, making this the backside. The example here, this defenseman, the hot man, makes a good read and recognizes he doesn't need to slide the entire way because the on-ball dodger hasn't really beaten the defender on ball. So as we re recover, we self-recover and match back up. Nice job by the new man on ball, lifting the bottom hand of the Dodger and creating a turnover. This example, we're sliding from the crease. There's our hot defender. We're going to second slide from a high defender down into the crease with a fill there. You'll see that this other off-ball defender who's up top does a nice job of splitting the difference between the other two offensive players who remain. Our hot man is ready to go. Our, there's our fill man sliding into the crease. And our other off-ball defender up top is doing a nice job of sagging in, covering two. We do a great job on ball and force a low angle shot. Crease sliding defense here. We've got a left crease defender. We've got a right crease defender. For this scheme, we're forcing this dodger to his left hand. So we're going to try to slide from the backside crease and then second slide either from X or the backside furthest wing defender. In this example, the wing defender will second slide into that crease. Here comes our hot. There's our backside wing defender second sliding. Do a good job of sliding, putting pressure on the ball and creating a turnover. In this example, we're sliding from the crease. What we're going to find out is during a sweep, by the offensive dodger from the top center, a defender, in this case this long stick midi, is going to be brought into the crease while his man cuts underneath the dodger. This makes this defender now the high crease and now he becomes the hot, the first slide. The man who was hot 
will now become the second slide, the fill. We'll see a great example here of the long stick midi sliding hot, the inside man becoming the fill, and then the on-ball defender recovering, but doing a nice job with a bump here. There we go, the hot man just got undercut, so he's, he slides off of his man or swept under. This was the hot man who's now filled into the crease. The defender on ball, you'll notice him run away when the slide shows up. This defender does a great job of bumping, meaning not sending the on ball defender all the way through to the new open man, but saying, hey, you can just easily come to me and I'll bump back out, getting us back to all even quickly. Thank you for watching this video by Championship Productions. My name is Lars Tiffany, the head lacrosse coach at Brown University, and I hope that your team will have a better team defense and slide scheme development in the future.